The Legend of Jimmy Spoon by Christiana Gregory. Nine, kidnapped. Summer was over. The air turned cooler. The days shorter. The snows were not far off. Fewer teepees stood along the stream as the bands of Shoshone began breaking camp, the various chiefs leading their families to winter sites. Jimmy was relieved to be among just a few households again, safe from so many strangers staring at his white skin. It was getting easier not to think about his parents and sisters, although when he did, he felt a small ache inside. In spite of his disgusts for the scalp dance, each passing jay found Jimmy more at home with the Indians. The idea of running away had faded. He feared being alone in the wilderness, and he was beginning to fear his father's anger if he did return. Jimmy felt paralyzed by confusion. It was simply easier for him to do nothing. When I'm ready, he resolved, I'll ask Napa and Gamu to take me home. After Pocatello's group had left, Washaki called for the women to pack while he and the others rounded up the horses. Jimmy looked all over for Pinto Bean, but she was nowhere to be found. Jimmy was heartbroken. Forgetting old mother's warnings, he sneaked away while she was gathering firewood. Just outside camp, Jimmy found some hunters. They hadn't seen Pinto Bean. He hurried along a trail that led into a pine forest. The tall Indian had just snared a rabbit and was mounting his horse. Yes, he had seen the spotted one just through the woods over the ridge with some other hunters. He pulled Jimmy under the saddle behind him. We will find your pony. But when they rode beyond the trees to a clearing, there was no horse in sight and no other hunters. Suddenly, the rider kicked into a gallop, his legs flying out from the horse's sides. Jimmy was terrified. He clung to the man's waist and tried to squeeze his legs tight so he wouldn't fall. Stop, please, he cried. Where are you going? As they rode farther from camp, Jimmy's heart pounded with fear. Why hadn't he listened to old mother? They are going to kill me and dance around my scalp, he thought with panic. Stop, but the Indian only whipped his horse harder. The horse's hooves kicked up chunks of mud as it sped on. Jimmy didn't want to be captured by White Plume. He tried to think. The only way to escape was to jump. But the horse was moving too fast. It was also much taller than Pinto Bean. It would be a long fall to the ground. But jumping was his only chance. He waited. A grove of aspen was up ahead. It came closer. The horse began to slow down among the trees. Jimmy reached up with both hands. Now, he grabbed a low branch. The instant he did, his body lurched out of the saddle. He crashed into the trail and scrambled as fast as he could toward camp, glancing over his shoulder. The Indian had already reined his horse around and was in a fierce gallop, lasso twirling in the air. The rope landed over Jimmy's neck and under one arm, dragging him several yards. The man hit him with his quirt. Jimmy lay in the Jimmy lay on Jimmy lay in the dirt, stunned. Get on or I will put an arrow through you. Please, Jimmy begged. But again he was whipped across the shoulders. Finally, Jimmy stood and let the Indian pull him onto the horse. They rode hard. Jimmy wanted to bite the man on the back or kick him. He had to get away. This might be his last chance, and he didn't care if he died trying. With adrenaline pumping furiously through him, Jimmy grabbed one of the warrior's braids, gave it a mighty jerk, and leaped off the horse. When they hit the ground, Jimmy ran for the brush. He turned to see the Indian hook an arrow into his bow and aim. Suddenly and unexpectedly, the man took a, whirring, took a running jump onto the horse and raced in the opposite direction. Several Shoshone were riding fast toward Jimmy, Washaki in the lead. Without stopping, Washaki leaned low to grab Jimmy around the waist and swoop him in front of the saddle. They sped toward home. Old Mother waited on the trail outside camp. When she saw Jimmy was safe, she wept. Then she scolded him. I thought I would never see my little son again, she said. White Plume's warriors wanted a white boy to sell for many ponies. But my horse... The hunters found your horse, Washaki said. He was twice as tall as Jimmy. His salt and pepper hair hung loose over his shoulders. A single feather lay at the back of his head, head today, signifying he was a leader. The hunters showed me where you had gone. Don't ever chase after your horse alone. Dawi, young brother. There are many things in the woods waiting for a boy who thinks he knows much. Sixty teepees were taken down the next morning and packed. Washaki's band had four hundred horses and dozens of dogs, most of them half-breed coyotes. Jimmy had noticed the dogs were not usually considered pets, and they were not used for food. They were just noisy tag-alongs, always sniffing for food. The Shoshone fanned out in different directions for the winter. 
it would be easier for smaller groups to find game and firewood. As Jimmy lashed together old mother's lodge poles, a girl watched him from behind a travoise. She blushed when he noticed her. Hello, Nahini. Or hello, Nahani. His face felt warm when he said her name, and he felt a happy ache inside. She was even prettier than the first time he'd seen her. And that is the end of chapter 9.